Uh, uh, hi everyone, and let's have uh, a closer look about the construction of a squirrel cage induction motor. So basically here the motor is composed of the two main parts, which is the stator, the stationary part, and the rotor. This is the rotor that rotates inside the, the, the stator or the stationary part of the motor. So let's look closely to each part. Let me take this out from here. And let's look first to the to the stator. So the stator basically is this is a three-phase stator. And in this stator, you can see here we have six wires. So each two wires represent one coil, one of the phases, the starting and the end of the of the coil. So these are six wires that we connect them as either delta or as star. So for example, in the star or the Y connection we will have one common point so we'll take one uh, coil or one conductor from each of the three phases and connect them as the common point and then we have the three phase coming from from the other uh, three three wires now let's come here and look closer and closer here are the coils that comes from these uh, windings and these are embedded inside the core material so you can see here there are grooves and these grooves are insulated from each other where you will have the, the winding. Now if you come closer in and look to the magnetic material, of course this is a high uh, permeability material to uh, hold the magnetic field inside or allow the magnetic field to go uh, inside it because it has very high permeability. And you can see here the eliminations to reduce the ED current loss. Now, when we connect the supply through this three phase, either is Y or delta connection, we will have what we call a rotating magnetic field inside. And this rotating magnetic field, what it does, it will induce the voltage or the current in the, the rotor. Now, unlike DC machine, in DC machine, we have a separate excitation for the rotor to induce the current that will generate the magnetic field, the interaction of the magnetic field of the rotor, and the stator will, ge will generate the torque, and then the rotor will start to rotate. But here, no. And thanks to the genius Nikola Tesla, who came up with this simple idea. So basically here, what is the rotor? This rotor, as you can see here, those are bars and these bars are coming from both sides with the same this is it ends here okay and they are short circuited these bars are short circuited and they are embedded so this is the this is the uh, the bar here is, this is the bar this is one bar this is another bar and this is the magnetic material again with high permeability to uh, allow the flux to stay inside so we have here flux, rotating flux, that will induce a current on those, on those bars, which will generate their own magnetic field. Now the interaction of the magnetic field that is generated here from induction, and here why we call it induction motors, and the main magnetic field inside the stator, the interaction of the two will generate a torque, and then they, this will start to to rotate. Very simple, but very genius design. Now, why we call this squirrel cage? So if you just have a look, closer look to the to those bars, these are same bars like those ones, but without the magnetic material. So you can look here, these, these, these are the bars, and they are short circuited from both, from both ends. They look like the squirrel cage that is used by different pits. So this is why they call this is a squirrel cage induction induction motor. So there's no brushes, uh, it's no DC external supply for the rotor, but again and again, the induction of the magnetic field from the stator to the rotor, this is what will generate the electromagnetic field in the rotor, which will reduce the, the torque.